awesome authors. My name is Amelinda Berryby, and I have the honor once again this year to be judging the short story portion of the awesome authors contest for the Ottawa Public Library, uh, specifically the category for ages 13 to 18. So to tell you a little bit more about me, I am the author of two novels, spooky novels, YA novels. These are them here, Dark Beneath the Ice and Here There Are Monsters. And as you could probably kind of get an idea from the covers, these are stories about ghosts and monsters and things that go bump in the night, um, which is basically the stuff that I most love to read. Although I'm pretty eclectic in my tastes, I will read anything from science fiction and fantasy to romance to literary fiction to nonfiction. Throw it at me, basically. <laughs> In terms of what I'm looking for in submissions, short stories are kind of a strange animal, uh, especially when you're dealing with only a thousand words to work with. That's a tall order. And uh, a lot of the time, the rules that you're told, say in English class, don't really reflect what you'll see in, uh, say, literary journals or anthologies. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of hard to pinpoint, like, okay, so what exactly do you mean by a short story? Um, you know, you'll read a lot of short stories that where it's like, well, this doesn't have much of a plot, for instance. So, you know, so what counts as a what counts as a short story? There's a lot of subjectivity involved in this, and that's a word that you're going to hear a lot of if you pursue writing and publishing. Basically, um, I'm exercising my judgment a little bit here and defining short stories the way I read them and the way I understand them. So, what that means for me is that there's kind of a balance between, on one hand, you know, the beautiful writing and the literary devices and um, sort of the, the nice poetic things that you can do with prose, but also plot. Um, you know, I'm looking for something that is more than a snapshot. Um, there does need to be some sort of movement within your piece. So whether it's, you know, a, it can be one moment even in a thousand words. There's, you know, sometimes there's one moment where everything changes and it can be somebody understanding something for the first time. It can be somebody um, whose relationship is on the point of changing, like whether that's a friendship or a romantic relationship or a relationship with their parents, whatever. Um, you're looking for something to change from the beginning to the end. In addition to having characters that you know, we can recognize characters that we can recognize as people. The other thing that really stands out in uh, particularly like, for example, from the winning submissions from last year was what they said without saying. So I'm looking for a story to show me things without coming straight up and telling me. So whether you're using a device like an unreliable narrator, whether you're using, narr uh, sorry, metaphors, um, other literary tricks like that can help you get that across. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have, you know, a theme or a point to make, but just to let the reader do some of the work themselves. So as far as tricks for inspiration go, I think my, my biggest recommendation is a really simple thing but also a really difficult thing, and that is to sit down and start. And just get your pen moving across the page, get your fingers moving on the keyboard, that gets your brain moving. And, you know, you can wait for inspiration till the cows come home, but I've found that more often than not, inspiration finds you already moving, and then you really start rolling. So, you know, if you're sort of Oh, poking away at an opening paragraph and you know you're thinking oh my god this is terrible what am I doing just you know keep your pen moving and you know write about you know the room around you or what happened to you that day or anything and just get moving so an author who really inspires me is Frances Harding She's an author from the United Kingdom, and she has a number of standalone fantasy novels. Uh, and some of them sort of lean more historical, some of them lean more uh, spooky, 
but they're all wildly original. They all are set in a different world that's completely self-contained and very intricate, very detailed. Um, so she has she has like five or six books, and they're all these separate, intricate, wonderful worlds. Um, and yeah, to like to build a whole series of those is you know like what more can you possibly ask from a writing career? Is kind of my feeling. And where I look for inspiration uh, is usually I start with a place uh, that I find either particularly uh, spooky or like that otherwise evokes strong feelings for me, um, a place that I remember really well, um, or just a place that I read about and find really interesting. The Atlas Obscura is uh, a great source for that. They have a whole laundry list of weird and wonderful places from all over the world. Um, and I think about, you know, given this place and this feeling that I attach to this place, what kind of thing would happen here? You know, who belongs in this space? And that for me really animates the story. Uh, the other thing is just sort of, you know, the internet news of the weird. You know, you find these crazy stories sometimes. Um, I was reading one not long ago about a foot tunnel also in the United Kingdom, that um, where time stood still. And that is what sparked the project that I'm working on right now. The project that I'm working on right now is another YA novel, and hopefully it will be very spooky. And it is based on the spooky basement of um, my high school, which uh, some of my weirdo friends went exploring in, and, um, and on some crazy articles that I found on the internet about um, caverns underneath this town um, that turned out to be like under a whole subdivision. Uh, and they only found it because there's a, there was a sinkhole that opened up in the ground and it turned out they had to evacuate the whole neighborhood. Um, so I'm mishmashing these things together and hopefully someday I will get to share that with you. So my last advice to you is just to jump in, have fun with it. You know, don't, uh, don't bite your nails about whether you're good enough or, you know, what'll happen if you don't place in the content. Like there's no point in writing if you're not going to enjoy it. So just, you know, roll up your sleeves, dig in up to your elbows and splash around because it's wonderful. And I'm going to be giving a workshop on February the 6th at 3.30. And I hope you will join me and I hope to see your submissions in my inbox coming up soon. Thank you.